फ्रेंड्स गुड डे आई जस्ट वॉन्ट इन टू शेयर सम सम इम्पोर्टेंट पॉइंट्स टू बी कंसिडर्ड इन सेफ्टी ऑडिट especially the systems audit when we discuss about systems audit that is a, a formal engagement between the uh, auditing body and your organization and as i said systems audit is pertaining to the determination of your company's performance in relation to the agreed standard systems now if it is occupational health and safety systems audit then it will be 45001 before that was uh, uh BSO SAS 18001 but since it was already replaced with uh the new standard the ISO 45001 The purpose of acquiring the certification, and if your company had already uh, been certified to have complied the requirements of ISO 45001, then therefore the continued surveillance of your company's performance, whether or not is still in keeping with the Uh, systems agreed the engagement of surveillance audit is to ensure that your company up to that date are still in compliance to the requirements clauses and sub clauses of the standard therefore if your company is a certified ISO 45001 then the agency competent to determine your compliance will conduct a regular internal audit for the system the criteria is system the ISO 45001 now my purpose of this uh, discussion is to give a clear understanding for the safety manager who are listening to me right now how you are going to handle the systems audit successfully without stress that you can explain properly on the justification of whatever items whatever uh, documents required by the auditor all right uh, i wish to i wish to discuss one by one on the clauses however the auditor have a full experience and understanding of how you do things you have your internal procedures you have internal template you have internal inspection template the key performance indicator He knows the internal auditor knows how you run your affairs in the organization. There are organization that the appointed um, internal auditor from their organization and they train it to the third party for understanding the ISO 45001. There are large companies that the even the internal audit is given in a separate contract by a third party which is also acceptable and it is more independent even if it is internal take note my friend that we usually use the word internal because those auditors are purely are purely uh, employed by the same company and trained to understand the auditing process it is term internal audit mainly because 
the person who will conduct the internal audit knows the special internal arrangement the template the PTW system that was agreed in your uh, system is it the same template from the corporate from your documents and the one cited on site these are the common internal uh, safety audit they will come to you they will check your documents show me your documents he will master your documents and at the same time, he will compare the PTW in the corporate documents and on the ground. Are you using the same template? If not, explain. Now, if the pro site project safety manager can explain that um, we have this arrangement and we agree with the client that we are going to suspend our own template, instead, the client suggested to use their own template, that is also acceptable. But you have that explanation. You need to explain like you are talking to a child because the auditor needs a proper explanation so that he can write it there. That there might be a, a deviation from these documents. However, this is agreed upon by the client, the consultant on site. So this will justify the non-using non of your internal documents because the client requires in that specific project that is very understood my point of this discussion is only to make sure that the safety manager is ready prepared to handle matters like this i will be raising some important points so that um, the safety manager will be prepared in um, answering the question otherwise if the auditor whether internal or external if he is not happy and satisfied with your discussion he will be prompted to write that to write that um, um, issues on the observation sheet either it is minor or major observation or non-conformity all right so to prevent this from being included because the moment it will be included in the recommendation you have the obligation to send him the proof that yes we have this discussion we have this so to avoid those things you better explain it properly because when the auditor either internal or external when he understand the flaw that you have all the reason to do that thing because it is required by the client then you are free it will not be included in the observation sheet this tip is for the purpose of minimizing items included in the observation sheet by the auditor the more observations will be cited from your um, by your auditor in your uh, comment sheet the more obligations you will have in rectifying those items all right so this presentation is mainly for the safety manager to minimize the uh, comments in the observation sheet now friends um the discussion of whatever deviations as long as it is i'm talking here of the project huh? As long as it is required or agreed upon by the client and the consultant, it is justified. Especially that most of, almost all of the client these days are ISO certified. When their documents are verified and checked by um, auditors of the standard, your internal audit will also respect the same. All right, so they will not put you there that this contract, this project deviated from the template of PTW system. They deviated from the... So then you have the problem of rectifying your corporate uh, documents. All right. Another thing, my friend, I would like to bring into a good discussion among safety practitioners is how your safety manager will deal with question and answer during the auditing process 
what should be the the mental setting of a safety manager when the scheduled audit is um, shared and escalated. Now, one thing I would like to give you an information or a tip perhaps for the safety manager is to avoid misinterpreting the question thrown at you during the audit process. Do not bring it into a personal level. Because even, even if the auditor, even if the auditor has a pure intention of inquiry in, so that he can establish whether the, the your, your management had used, had complied with the closes of ISO 45001, do not bring it into a personal level. Do not interpret it, misinterpret it that way. Because if you do so, you will lose the track. You cannot appreciate the question and answer. Now, the purpose of this uh, discussion is for you, safety manager, to be more objective in dealing, in um, explaining the questions thrown at you by the auditor. The questions being thrown to you is not interrogation. This is not investigation. This is only a matter of inquiry so that the auditor can write something that in relation to these clauses, no? let's say clause number 6 of ISO 45001, in relation to these clauses, I found out, I had seen, and I, uh, or perhaps I am attaching attach, attachment number 12 huh? as an evidence that the contractor had complied clause number 6. Attachment number 13 is the close out of this um, item, attachment number 12. So, in that case, you are guiding the consultant as well. You are making him full of information so that when he writes something in his remarks during the audit, at least he can explain it properly. You give him the full information that we comply this, and we have this. We have, like in the safety inspection, had you conducted safety inspection, do not interpret it that the consultant is trying to find where are you during these days. No. He is asking you, do you have? Because if you have, then we are going to make this as a remark on close number of the ISO 45001. So, if you have that, safety inspection and observation he will ask again is there any close out like in the client in our side when we will be asked of had you conducted any safety inspection in this uh, project do not uh, make your advance assumptions that um, is he trying to huh? we, we can hypothesize sometimes this is common thing if we don't understand the auditing process. You may hypothesize that is this auditor is trying to check on my whereabouts? Is he trying to check whether I had uh, done my job well? What I want from you guys is to remove these wrong assumptions. Because the purpose of auditor, I am the auditee. Huh? I am the auditee in our um, in our department. So I have to deal with the auditor properly. Whatever questions uh, he will throw, I will explain it one by one. I need to understand the all corners of the management system. Otherwise, he will write that in the remarks and we have the problem of closing it. So I explain it one by one. Like I am talking to an innocent child so that he will understand. This is only my tip, so that in the remark sheet, there will be no minor observations or major observations or NCR. All right. So, um, my tip is not to bring that into the uh, personal level and remove the wrong assumptions that you will charge from your mind. You may charge the auditor of tracking you down. You are not doing your job. No. This is only to make sure that certain clauses, certain clause among the clauses of ISO 45001 is 
with the following evidence. Safety inspection and safety observation with three items, with three findings, and here is the follow, uh, the close out from the contractor. These things help the auditor enrich his findings, full of evidence, and to show it to the company who, uh, whom I audited three days back or two days back or one week or one month had complied clauses, important clauses in the system, ISO 45001. That is the point. Very important. The mental conditioning of the, the, the mental state of the audity that he will appreciate every question. First of all, appreciate. Not to be hostile with the question. There are some auditors wherein the way you listen to the response, you will find the element of hostility. You will find the elements of the audity. Sometimes there is an element of uh, not only hostility, but um, having an assumptions that, wait, why you are asking this question? You see? Why you selected our project? Uh, why you raise that question against me? Is it that we are checking the system? Uh. So in that, in that case, we have to avoid this because the more so that it will give an idea to the auditor that there is something wrong in this uh, management. So we will find more. Now, my suggestion is that do not give, not even a gesture of hostility, not even a gesture of defensive because the more that avoid the, the misconception of making it on a personal level, audit is not to go against you, but it is about the system. All right? This is about the system. They will check whether the template is running or not, whether the procedure is properly communicated or not. Your internal documents, the PTW system, is it the same PTW applied in some projects? These are the things that they are going to check. Otherwise, they will ask for the focal person why this uh, contractor in that project is not using our template. Why you leave them alone? So those are the questions. Then the focal person will be have the difficulty of um, finding the solution, uh, finding the solution of why the contractor, why that uh, uh, safety manager in that project is not using your own template as agreed to be your internal documents. These are the things. Now, if you will consider my recommendation to avoid to bring this matter into a personal level, to ensure that you don't have that feeling of hostility. You shall not be too defensive in your question and answer. System shall be protected. They have to make sure that the system is being followed from top management, from the corporate document down to the project level. I hope I had um, again contributed some important things for health and safety manager for the purpose of auditing systems audit in your project. Thank you and good day.